Business, business, business. Business, business. Business. Business, business. Business, business. Ho, 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 ho. Business, business, business. Biz, biz. Turbo power. What's going on? Have a seat. No. I don't think that's true. You mean right now? Let's go! Turbo power? That's not a dinosaur. That's just moose. Silly turbo power. Well, welcome back to Epic Cars. And uh, as the intro shows, we are uh, concentrating on the 6.5 liter diesel truck. It's called Project Old Bones, but it is a 1993 K3500. So it's a dually uh, one ton with the 6.5 liter turbo diesel in it. And basically what I'm trying to do with this uh, series of videos, I did the Ford Power Stoke Stroke uh, video previously. Now I'm trying to concentrate on the uh, 6.5 because both the 6.0 Power Stroke and the 6.5 liter, and I guess you could probably back that up into the 6.2 liter diesel engines from GM, really get a bad rap out there in the diesel world. They are kind of the uh, black sheep in the family as far as, uh, yeah, they're diesel engines, uh, yeah, they're supposed to be able to be workhorses and do all this stuff, but they both engines have uh, some design issues, design flaws. They are not respected. They don't have a huge following. Now, I'm here to, I don't know if I want to say debunk those issues because I think they are legitimate issues. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but at the same point in time, I'm here to basically explain as long as you know what those issues are, uh, and you do some preventative measures to uh, prevent any major issues uh, from happening, uh, and also common maintenance and things like that with these I engines. I don't know how to respond to that. Well, Siri. So what I'm here to do on these videos is basically just kind of bring in the issues that are known with these two engines, what you can do to prevent those issues from hopefully happening, and then third, I guess, try to convince some people that Guys, these are actually pretty good engines, and depending on your use, I think that that's an important uh, factor, but depending on what you're exactly going to be using the, the diesel engines for, mods you're going to do, what kind of modifications you're going to do to those engines, then, you know, they're not that bad. And, and what's interesting, and I said this in my 6.0 video, uh, is that I own both of the 6.0 and the 6.5 liter diesel at the same time, uh, kind of a rarity, I would imagine. And so I own uh, two of the most uh, ridiculed, uh, I don't want to say the word hated, I think that's too strong, uh, but just kind of made fun of engines uh, over the uh, diesel years, the diesel spectrum, as you might want to call it, um, and just say, hey guys, there's some, there's some things you can do to these engines uh, that make them very dependable, very good workhorses, and I'm proud to own both of them, and so let's get started. All right, so what you're looking at right here is the 6.5 liter turbo diesel. It looks a little different than stock because I've actually put on a new intake system and so forth uh, for the air, uh, but there's usually a little shroud that goes over the top. You saw that um, earlier in the video. So the 6.5 liter diesel is actually a 395 cubic inch engine, uh, which is kind of cool because it kind of reminds you of a big block or something. Most of the 6.5s were equipped with turbos uh, when they came out. They came out roughly around 1992. Now the 6.2 liter diesel that was its predecessor came out in 1982. So about 10 years later, uh, the 6.5 came out. A little bit bigger displacement, they made some improvements to the overall engine and, and they definitely added a turbo system uh, to it. The engine was never meant to be a powerhouse or a torque maker. You know, they were competing against Ford and Dodge and so forth at the time, but really this was designed to be a very highly used, uh, moderate fuel mileage, kind of competent diesel. So when I say competent diesel, it, you know, again, decent power, decent torque, Mainly this thing was designed kind of a military based diesel engine. It didn't have to be some major powerhouse out there, but it had to be very good on fuel economy. It had to be fairly easy to work on and you know something that they could use in a military capacity for a lot of the military vehicles, a lot of the blazers, the uh, CU, CKs or something like that, the, the trucks, uh, half ton, three quarter ton, one tons, uh, and even in some of the lighter heavy duty trucks, uh, Hummers and so forth, they use this engine. 
So again, they got used a bunch. They got put in very bad situations. Uh, probably maintenance wasn't the best on them, especially in a, in a wartime situation. So they needed something that was dependable, reliable, got fairly good gas mileage, and could get the job done. As I'm reading through some of this stuff associated with this engine, it says there are several uh, GM 6.5 liter diesel engine uh, production op options. The turbocharged L56 was used most in light duty three quarter ton. Uh, heavy duty three quarter ton and one ton engines use the turbocharged L65, which denotes that by having an uh, F in your VIN number. And sure enough, mine has an F number in the right uh, location. Um, the L56, which is you know used in the three quarter ton and, and lower vehicles, they did have an EGR, exhaust gas recycler and ca catalytic converters. Uh, but the L65, which is this one, has no EGR and no catalytic converter. GM was the first manufacturer to in introduce an electronically controlled fuel injection system into a diesel pickup truck. So for 92 and 93 model years, uh, GM used a specific Stanodyne DB2 mechanical injection pump. So great thing about this truck, and guys, whenever I bought this truck, this is one of the reasons why I bought this specific truck is because it was a 93. Uh, and it still used the mechanical injection pump uh, rather than the electronic injection pump that came at 94 and later. So good thing about this specific vehicle is I've got the better injection uh, system and I don't have to worry about changing that out and major issues with that. 94 on, there are some issues with it and, and I'll go into detail in that in a uh, little bit later in the uh, video here. In mid-1996, uh, GM implemented a redesigned engine cooling system incorporating twin non-bypass blocking thermostats and 130 US gallons per minute water pump. So again, that is one of the issues that I see consistently with this engine. Uh, lift pump, fuel delivery basically, I'll, I'll kind of categorize it in that, and then cooling. Uh, those are the two biggest issues that I see on this specific engine and the variants associated with this engine. What they, a lot of people do is they'll come back and say, hey, add a later model uh, twin thermostat uh, uh, housing uh, and upgrade the radiator and things like that. Uh, you can also do it from a Duramax. Um, you can add uh, a different lift pump, fuel pump, those kind of things. Uh, from later versions or aftermarket and it gets you a very reliable engine. Probably the other thing that I've heard a lot about is the harmonic uh, balancer on these. Evidently going bad and obviously creating uh, such vibration uh, at a violent uh, RPM range uh, that it can actually break, break your crankshaft. So that's a pretty major issue. But overall, uh, I would say you're looking at fuel delivery systems, and, and within that category, electronics associated with the fuel delivery, and then cooling. Those seem to be the two biggest issues on this specific platform. Now, a common complaint with this engine uh, straight off the bat is that it was just not a very big power producer. Um, and I think one of the things that you have to understand about this engine is it wasn't designed to be a really strong low-end engine. I think I read in a forum somewhere, RPM is everything with this engine. You've got to get it up above 2500 RPMs before it really starts doing anything. Uh, low-end torque is not its strong point. It produces decent numbers. I think 225-ish horsepower and about 400 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, at around 3,000, 3,500 RPM. Uh, so again, nothing that's just gonna knock your socks off. It's not gonna win any drag races, anything like that. But it's decent, guys. It's decent for the day. It's decent for what it's uh, gonna be used for. You can probably boost that up, uh, not a ton, but a little bit with some aftermarket parts. Uh, on this specific truck, I put a four inch exhaust all the way out the back. I put this new intake system in. Um, there's a couple other things I'm going to be doing to it from a performance standpoint, but really that's all I'm going to do to this truck. The rest of the improvements on this truck is going to be basically associated with taking care of some of those inherent issues uh, with the fuel delivery system, oil delivery system, the harmonic balancer, uh, and the cooling system. Those are the two things or three things that I'm going to be kind of concentrating on. Now, the other thing about this truck in updating it and upgrading it the way I'm looking at it is um, I'm probably not gonna do everything to this truck because of the use that I see this truck doing. I'm not gonna be towing a ton of uh, weight with this truck. Uh, mainly, I'm building this truck to be a good, dependable work truck for me. Uh, it's got the camper shell on the back uh, and I can put tools and equipment and things like that in the back 
take it from job site to job site, and it's a good, dependable vehicle, four-wheel drive, uh, automatic transmission, it's got AC, it's, everything's comfortable. Uh, I can take it anywhere I want to take it and be okay with it, uh, but also not have a ton of money into this situation. So in looking at the main issues associated with this engine, remember fuel delivery, uh, cooling is, is a very important factor that, and then later on in the 94 and up, uh, the PMD was an issue. The PMD is an issue because of basically the placement of where it is, the pump mounted driver. Now I'm talking specifically of 94 and later uh, engine models. The PMD was actually down inside the valley of the engine, underneath the intake system, and it was screwed to the actual uh, injection uh, system. And it was basically designed to the injector, the, the fuel coming by and through the injection system was supposed to cool the PMD. Well, uh, it didn't do a very good job at that. So really the main issues with the PMD, uh, pump mounted driver, is uh, essentially thermal uh, in nature. And the fact that it gets too hot, it cracks, uh, the electronic comp components inside that just wear out. Uh, and you often uh, have to relocate the PMD driver, which that's not a huge deal, guys. They, they make a kit to relocate it. Uh, typically, you put it back over there, kind of on that side of the engine, or maybe even over here, get it away from the heat, uh, and it, it's no problem. Uh, oil capacity seems to be a little bit of an issue on this engine. Um, it only holds about seven quarts, if I remember right. I thought I saw a sticker somewhere uh, that said that. Um, and guys, when you look at most diesel engines, they're up in the 9 to 11 quarts range. Um, so you don't have the uh, natural effect of, of enough volume of oil going through the cooling system and then thus going back through the engine. And so cooling off the oil uh, can be an issue uh, with this truck. Part of that issue with the oil system is not only does it have a, a low amount of fluid that's circulating throughout, you've got a, a little bit of a cooling issue uh, problem uh, from the overall engine itself. Uh, but the there's a C-clip on the oil cooler lines themselves that is a very, best, best way to say it, it's a very fragile piece of equipment. And it can end up breaking, thus then leaking oil out of that, that uh, oil pressure line uh, into your engine. And that's not obviously one thing you don't need. You already have a low amount of fluid anyways. Uh, you, always, you already have a, a, a overheating issue on that oil anyways. Uh, you have any of that leak out or in worst case scenario, literally the entire tube comes out uh, and just dumps oil all over the place. Uh, obviously that that's, tends to be a problem on these engines. So just reinforcing that, getting a new uh, either set of oil cooler lines or they make uh, this little kit, basically they're just upgraded uh, connectors, upgraded clips uh, that keep that oil line from separating uh, and it's good insurance, uh, cheap insurance uh, to make sure that your engine runs really well for a long time. So good, getting back to the cooling system, uh, basically what are the upgrades that they uh, are highly suggesting on this engine is increasing the uh, water pump. Uh, I think they, these came with about 90 gallons per minute as far as from factory water pumps. And so they, they recommend upgrading to a 130 gallon per minute uh, water pump, which, hey, anytime you can get extra flow through the heads and things like that around the engine, I think that's a great thing. Uh, now, in order to handle that increased flow, what they suggest doing is actually changing out this single thermostat housing and putting in a dual thermostat housing. Uh, so it's a, it's a bolt-on piece, no major issues here as far as having to you know make anything or change anything. It's a bolt-on application. Change out the water pump to the higher flow water pump and change out the thermostat housing to from a single to a double thermostat housing uh, and you get, I guess, utilization of that increased flow. So if you're gonna go in there, like I said, and upgrade the water pump and the thermostat housing and things like that, why not increase the fan size? So on the Duramax fan, uh, later on, uh, the engine that replaced this 6.5, uh, they actually had a bigger fan and it was a composite fan uh, and they say uh, that it's a direct fit as long as you change out the fan clutch uh, to the Duramax fan clutch. And so you can buy that. It's an off-the-shelf item. Uh, it's something that you can buy from the local auto, auto parts store and just retrofit the front of this engine with the 6.5 uh, fan clutch and, and also uh, the upgraded fan. Just my two cents, 
while you're in there, while you have everything kind of off uh, the front of the engine, wouldn't be a bad idea to change out the harmonic balancer. As I mentioned earlier, that's been an issue. The internals of the harmonic balancer can go bad uh, and it starts getting off weight. Uh, and obviously when you're, when you're turning at a very high RPM, 2,500 to 4,000 RPM right in that range, and you have any kind of wobble uh, in that uh, harmonic balancer system, if it's not doing its job, if it's not balancing the engine, uh, there's a chance that you can actually crack uh, the crankshaft on this engine. Obviously you do that, your day's done. Uh, the engine's gone, uh, full rebuild, uh, if it hasn't done any other major damage, which I'm sure it will. Uh, and so you might as well just throw it in the throw it in the pond and, and use it as a boat anchor because it's not going to work after that. So my suggestion would be while you have all the components off the front of this engine, go ahead and change out the harmonic balancer. And that's just one more piece of insurance that you've had uh, that you can add to the, the, the list of, hey, I feel good about this system uh, and do it while it's all off. I plan on doing that. So I'm going to do the harmonic balancer. I'm going to do the upgrade of water pump. I'm going to do the dual uh, thermostat housing. Uh, I don't have to worry about the PMD uh, or the mechanical injection on this engine because it's a 93. Uh, I am going to do the lift pump on the, the rail uh, of this truck. Uh, and obviously I'm going to look at other things like oil, uh, making sure that I change it out consistently. Um, and I think that's about it. And uh, I, like I said, not only do I have projects scheduled for Old Bones here, I'm looking around the shop right now and I've got a ton of parts uh, for the 6.0 uh, Power Stroke in the Excursion coming up. So a lot of new videos coming up about that. I've also got some uh, other videos coming up in the near future about some of the projects that are leaving the shop. Uh, I'm getting rid of some things that I didn't think I'd ever get rid of, uh, but I'm trying to make room for new projects as they come in too to keep, kind of keep things interesting on the channel, guys. So. Uh, guys, God bless. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate the support. Uh, please like the videos if you can. I, I would really appreciate that. And of course, subscribe. Uh, I, I really appreciate every uh, comment that I get. I read every comment that I get. Uh, and sometimes I am able to respond to them. Uh, but just thank you so much for just allowing me to be a, a, a creator on this platform. It's really a cool uh, situation to be in. Hit that subscribe button, guys. God bless. Take care. See you next time.